Saturday, Sunday. Yes, it is Sunday at 12 o'clock. Hopefully you're all enjoying your Sundays of rest and you're watching the video. So thanks guys. If you are watching, make sure you drop the video like. will be very much highly appreciated. And obviously transfer deadline day is today. So I kind of went for my shortlist because of this shortlist. Quite a lot of players. And we're looking to bring in this guy uh, on loan. Amner, I think it was, was for full season loan. I'm not sure if that deal actually goes ahead just yet. Because we kind of look to bring in someone else. Plus him, because there's a lot of players I really, really want. Like Pedersen, I've been trying to sign for the last two seasons now. And did try to sign him at the start of the season one, I think. And then tried to sign him in January, and then tried to sign him now. We'll see if we can sign him or not. His contract's running out, which is good. So every time we sign him, he just gets cheaper and cheaper. Um, the thing is, it, the problem for us is not the fact we can, can't afford him. We can afford him. But we can't, um, for some reason, he just doesn't accept our wage. We're giving him, like, a critical first-team player. We're giving him, like, seven grand, so more than he actually wants. Um, and that's all we can actually afford right now. So we can't really afford the wage. I think in January, what I'm going to do is mainly focus on him to try and sign and request some funds. And then what we will, poss what we will possibly do is... Um, just try and give him like 10, 15 grand or something like that because obviously he wants to be one of the highest played players and I believe there are two players on about 15,000 pound wage now. I think that's um, Boswick is on that and also um, Gideon, the new signing from Arsenal is actually on that as well. So guys, let's crack on into the video. We do have Wigan, we do have Birmingham and we not forget we do have Millwall in this game. Tough game starting off against Wigan. I'm going to tell you that for a flat. What we did, we was pushed up against the back quite a, quite a bit, but then we get the old counter attack, which was good. We got Taylor on the ball now, gives the ball into Solizano. Solizano goes to the head, and Solizano is actually pretty beast in the air, which is why I didn't actually notice before. I know in old FIFA's, I now noticed he was that good, but unfortunately Fernandez does get injured, and he, he could have carried on playing, but I didn't want to escalate his injury further because he is a brand new sign, and injuries have not been on our side lately. I mean, we've got so many injuries against us, it's taking a piss. So, uh, our uh, youth academy player does end up coming on. We've got more youth happening in this episode as well. But it's a free kick on the edge of the box. Oh, well, about 30 odd, 35? We will find out now. So look, McCann, the man of the hour, 30 yards out. What? This is perfect ter territory for him. He is one of the best free kick takers there is, and it makes it go 1 0. 44 minutes in, and I ain't gonna lie, that's against the run of play. I mean, we will be unpushed right back there. But it's 1 0. It's a perfect free kick. Let's have a quick instant replay of this free kick. Does the keeper. But the thing is, the keepers are a bit naff on free kicks, I've noticed. It's a. Like, I'm scoring free kits. I think I've missed one out of all the free kits I've had. I haven't had many, to be fair. But, um, the goalkeepers are really naff. Like, they don't jump properly. I don't know if it's because they see it really late. But anyway, good save from our goalkeeper. He seems to be doing well. And uh, see, we have just sold our uh, main goalkeeper, well, the uh, highest rated goalkeeper, who didn't actually play last season. He did play one game. Didn't really find him that good, uh, in my opinion. But uh, this guy's good enough. And he comes out. Look at this. Actually, amazing. He's a proper good goalkeeper whether we will end up replacing him we don't know because i'm not sure his actual growth if anyone knows let me know in the comments below and while you're down here guys tell me where do you think i'm gonna finish in the league we're we gonna get promoted or we're we gonna uh well are we gonna get all my potion or uh playoff positions because i personally think sixth place playoff position but anyway what a ball from a can taylor to so uh solizano even on the ball and it's a counter attack look at this we end up putting it in the back of the net. It's counter attack football at its finest. We parked the bus and we just caught Solazano up front on his own, obliterating the defence with his pace. But um, what do you think we're going to finish? The board actually wants us to finish above mid-table. So that is playoffs well, from 10th 
to about playoff position. So we are we have got aim for that, or we get sacked anyway. So I ain't aiming any lower for me personally. I think the highest we could possibly get, um, if we're going on current form, which is good, and we got um, we've got a total of seven points already, we could get automatic promotion. But will our form continue to the end of the season? Because if we take into consideration last season, we started off poor, lost a couple of games, drew a couple of games, and then we started winning. But what could happen now is that, uh, and then we kind of lot started losing at the end of the season. So what can actually happen now is that we start off really well, we start winning a ton of games, we're in third place now, and then we start losing a load of games, so it's not too sure what could happen. But anyway, transfer deadline day is happening, reporting this guy is a bit of a panic buy, I'm not going to lie, it was a massive, massive panic buy, so I wasn't too sure about our strikers, I thought, you know what, bugger, I'll just bring him in, and this kind of blew our deal for the loan, um, unfortunately, but that's transfer deadline day over, we'll have a look at the final signings we have brought into the side, but anyway, we got more, um, what do you call it, scouts, so we're just kind of getting rid of a lot of players, that not really needed um, well, but we end up signing this guy um, hopefully they can develop quite a bit obviously like 94 rated a lot of goalkeepers so if we can develop a goalkeeper we could actually have a youth academy goalkeeper which I think could be pretty amazing but anyway let's have a look at my transfer negotiations and just to show you guys who we brought in and who have left um, come on get across there we go Okay, so we brought in uh, Gideon as well. We brought in Bruins, which is on loan. Fernandez on loan. Uh, Halon on loan. Kone, um, a permanent buy. So uh, Gideon and Kone is only two permanent uh, signings. The rest are all loan. So three loan signings, which is not too bad. And then the rest are a lot of loanees. So, lo uh, sorry, a lot of players who've been loaned out. So, um, which is good for us because we've got a lot of young players. And we've got a lot of players who are low rated. But they could still get inside, but they're not that good. So they are, like... 60 rated or a little just under 60 rated so we can just send them out on loan and they'll develop like by three or four depending on see on their potential but um, it's gonna be interesting to see how our youth players do because we find we have signed a cup uh, several youth players now and uh, hopefully we can get those out on loan there's some youth players which aren't gonna play they they just literally for a backup so if a player does get injured for example our goalkeeper we've bought a youth player in it for as our, our goalkeeper and he is only like 50 odd rated but he's just there to play one or two games um and the problem having like two big goalkeepers such like what we did uh, one of our contracts ran out of one of our goalkeepers so unfortunately we didn't keep him but we kind of replaced him with a youth player um the only downside around two big goalkeepers they both want to play and unfortunately that's not going to happen so you kind of you want to stick with the same goalkeeper week in week out and you kind of my tactics normally is you want to sit with the same spine we got one up with McCann against Millwall good on the corner my tactics normally is that you want to sit with the same spine and the same defence I never change my defence only part of my defence I really change is the right back due to tightness and we don't have a replacement right back just yet and we do now um, with a youth player but um what I normally do is keep the same goalkeeper, the two, the same centre backs, and the left back and right back kind of can interchange. And also, I try to keep the same uh, centre mid. So, if we, as you can see, we're playing the 4 5 1, and you kind of got this diamond, which is the goalkeeper, the two centre backs, and that centre mid uh, making going on there. And we kind of try to keep that the exact same all the time. That's what my objective is, try and keep the same lineup every single game. Also, we can't do that all the time. Um, but if you've got a regular player who can play, but we've got 2-0 up with a penalty. Um, McCann with a second goal of the game. Is he going to get a hat-trick or not? But try to keep that diamond so like Gideon he's starting every single game near enough. And then the rest of the players, like our like Christmas tree, Christmas tree part of the 4-5-1, um, is kind of, it can change all the time. It doesn't really matter. But we do change the formation a little bit. I think we change it at the end of this game. We change it during this game, but then we change it a little more. But anyway, look at this run for McCann now. Look at him come running in and ask you a bullet of a header to make it 3 0 against the mighty Millwall with some amazing fans, you have to say, don't you? Uh, but it's uh, 3 0 and we completely dominated the game, which uh, surprised me a little bit um, because we kind of got him off from the start, which was good because. Uh, if we get them off on the start, we kind of put them on a back foot and they never really recover. I've noticed that within FIFA. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that diamond thing, kind of, that's my creation. It's uh, my idea of, like, the goalkeeper, the same centre-backs, and then the same centre-mid. But anyway, we put McCann, right, this is what we did with our formation. We changed our formation. We put McCann as a right forward. Hence the reason he got so many freaking goals. And that's what we're actually going to do. We're going to change it to... And just put the one camp position in the fourth uh, into a right forward to give that striker more support. Um, but I made a mistake here. Uh, well, actually, not a mistake. I made a risk. I decided to take a risk and I changed the for not the formation, the lineup, quite a bit. I didn't have to. 
Um, want to give uh, Kone a runabout. And normally you bring him on as a sub, which is why I didn't do. I changed him, and we changed our left mid as well, so, and our centre back. Yeah, we took my vote out as well, so we put Zach in. Um, it's a risk I decided to take, even though I was just talking about not changing stuff. But we did have a few, several tired players. Um, as you can see, the the change of defence causes this havoc. Uh, we got one down within 13 minutes. It wasn't good whatsoever, so we changed it. We knew it was a bad tactic straight away. Um, so sometimes you got to risk it, but personally, don't do it. Try to keep it all the time. Even Usually, you can get away with um, three-quarter fitness starting off a game, and that normally does it fine, but obviously, if, if it's less now, you want to be fresh players. Um, but what I would do personally is try and get two backup centre-backs who can play with each other, um, which we don't really have right now. Um, we could really do that with Movoto and uh, Brisley, I think it is. I'm not percent what the guy's name is because we haven't really played him. We, I think he played the first game against uh, Walter Hull City, but then Hull City end up he ended up scoring on goal in the game, which was him and Movoto actually. But anyway, Birmingham's next game is against Burnley. Uh, just so you all know, unfortunately, it didn't show ours. I like the show that if it actually if it shows ours, I'll actually feature it. But it didn't understand. But um, yeah, it's um, it was a struggle of a game. It's just because we changed the team round. We put Kone up front, and he didn't do bugger all. He literally was the worst striker I've ever used, and he was a massive, massive panic buy. Panic buy. Um, I don't know. I think it's because when I was playing like Vassal, actually we got Vassal on now. I put Vassal on and in other games and uh, Washington, and they weren't really scoring. They wasn't doing much. It was just Solizano and McCann getting the goals, but. Um, what can you do? And that's all I can say. But anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. My name is Welsh Dragon DSG. I want to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you all enjoy the series. This is episode 3. There will be a brand new video up tomorrow at 4.30, if I believe it's Monday. But anyway, we do end up losing our game 2 0, so a massive blow in our morale and uh, uh, getting better. But uh, we were in fifth place, which is still pretty good. Uh, fourth place, even, so it's still pretty good. And we're only three points off first place. So, thanks for watching, guys, and goodbye.